the MLSs could be related to uh, local realtor association, maybe state uh, realtor association, or maybe just a different group of uh, local real estate agents that want to share between them their uh, listings and, of course, uh, offer compensation um, for other real estate agents or other real estate brokers for bringing their um, buyers or, or, or tenants or what have you uh, to that listing. Um, so as I said, most of the MLSs are related to Realtor Association, local or state Realtor Association, or maybe Realtor Association which to get which related within uh, a, a geographic area. Um, so MLS basically takes um, every other people, other other brokers listings and gather them together. And not only listings, uh, MLS also gather different information. And this information is being stored in uh, that association server. They uh, put it all together and um, then they share it to other real estate brokers or real estate agents. And that information, as I said, is not only listing, it's also contact information of different agents and different brokers. It could be also any other information that this group of uh, realtors or brokers or um, real estate agent or real estate brokers uh, ever need to put together. And what is metrics? Metrics is one tool um, that's being used in different MLSs uh, to showcase the MLS information. Metrics by far is not the only um, tool out there to showcase MLS information. There are different tools out there. Just on the top of my head, um, Flex MLS, which being used in different MLSs throughout the country. Um, is another tool. Um, the information itself that's being uh, outcast, that's being um, generated to the user, to the end user, which is me and you, which is every real estate agent, is the same. The information itself is the same always. It's going to be the same listings. It's going to be the same addresses. It's going to have the same description, same contact information of, of the listing agent, uh, same descriptions, um, the same um, tax ID number. All of that is going to be the same. But um, the tool to generate, the tool to showcase this information is going to be it could be different between different MLSs, between different um, between different associations, and one of the tools that's being used is metrics. Um, again, the tools are very similar to one another. For example, metrics is very similar in use to um, Flex MLS. It's very similar. Uh, to MLS Advantage, which is a tool that it's exclusive as far as I know to the Florida Association. I don't know of any other associations that use that, but I may be wrong. Um, so it's very similar in the way that it showcases the information in that way, but it's a little bit different because every, every tool um, uses it a little bit different, but the information is always going to be the same. So, be, so now that we explain what MLS is and what metrics is as a tool to showcase MLS information, we can start and go over the metrics itself. Metrics is, um, I think, one of the most uh, common uh, tools for MLSs out there. Uh, one of the most common one um, is metrics. It's being used in many MLSs, as far as I know, throughout the country. Um, the just uh, Miami Association, which is um, one of the associations that Jonathan Solomon Realty is, is a member of. It's actually the first one that we became a member of. That is the main one and the one that's been used for the past, I think, four years at least. 
Um, but uh, also different MLSs use few different tools, not only metrics, not only other tools, they use different ones. Um, so this one is, is very common, it's very popular, it's, it's very common and, and many other MLSs throughout the country use that. So I think it's a good uh, class to learn right now because you might, you might come across this uh, tool if you're not using it right now um, within your membership. Um, so um, I'm sorry if I didn't add anyone until now. I'm, I apologize about that. Uh, but we have uh, two new people that join our class. And um, as I said, we're going to start right now working over the MLS. So I'm going to start sharing my, my screen with you in just a second. and we'll be able to see that. One second. Does everyone see my screen? Daisy, do you see my screen? Uh, I see you. You see me? Okay, don't I see my screen. Yeah. One second, I apologize. Share the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, does everyone see my screen right now? Yes, I see it. Yes, we do. Perfect, amazing. Okay, so this is um, what's called the Miami Getaway. Um, very similar to other membership and other local association. Each one of them has uh, a main page. Alert from Google Chrome 2021 um, Honda Foreman Rubicon 4x4 APS 520 with manual shift test review. Um, where they can uh, have the different tools that they, that they have. Um, on that's related to the MLS right here, and you can you have a link to each and every one of them. So uh, this is the main page, and from here we're gonna link into metrics. We're gonna open metrics, which is the most important tool, by the way, within all those tools. The tool that is the MLS itself, whether it's metrics or different one, would be the most important one. Um, so this is metrics. This is what you see when you open metrics. Um, if you are using metrics, you, you should be very familiar with this, uh, with this page. This is the home page. If you're using other MLSs, then it would look a little bit different. Um, so let's go over each part step by step. Um, the first section that we see here would be my metrics. Um, it will have the dashboard, which is this main page right here. It will have a summary. It will have contact, auto e out auto emails, uh, saved search, sent email, my CMAs, uh, my listing, cards, and uh, home visit. Oh, thank you. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Perfect. Um, okay, so we can start with, um, we're going to skip that for a moment and we're going to go into searches, which is going to be the, the first uh, class, the first section of this class that we're going to go over. Um, after searches, uh, we have um, stats, we have released IMAP links, um, 
finance, add and edit, which we're gonna go over in the next class and market reports. Um, so let's start with the searches, which is the most important thing. Uh, the searches is every search and every type of listing on the MLS um, is basically divided into a different type of listing, different type of property. And what do I mean by that? The first one that we see over here would be a single family slash condo. That is a residential cell, residential property, whether it's a condo, whether it's a co-op, whether it's, um, it's a single family home, whether it's a duplex, whether it's a triplex, it will show up here. Every residential property, that is uh, categorized as a residential property for sell and purchase, we can find on the first section right here. That will be where we can find it, okay? And we can click on it just for example, it will open for us all the criteria page, the main criteria page, where we can select different criteria of what we wanna look for. We can also look by the map, um, and we can also take a look at the results when we click right here, okay? So we're gonna go over here again. When we click on search, the first one that we have again is the residential properties. After the residential property, another type of listing, another type of properties that exist on the MLS, would be residential income. Residential income, um, we're gonna touch it in, in a moment, but in order to understand what residential income is, we're gonna have to go over commercial for a moment, but uh, we're gonna go over it in a minute. But residential income is just another type of uh, property that exists on the MLS. After that, we have uh, residential land, then we have residential rental, which includes everything when you look for rental. If it's not a rental commercial, if you're not looking for uh, an office or for um, a retail store or, or anything like that, if you're looking for residential rental, you're looking for a house or an apartment, um, for a condo for rent, all of those will fall under residential rental. Then we have uh, commercial land, then we have commercial improved, which is everything commercial. We have business opportunity, which is commercial without the real estate. Anything commercial, um, any, any business that it's out there for sale um, that doesn't include the real estate will fall under business opportunity. Cross property, open houses, public records, uh, search other MLSs agents, office, and more. So let's go into, by the way, does anyone have a question about um, this part of, um, of the class? So, no, okay. So let's go into that, in, um, into the um, type of um, properties. For, uh, that exist on the MLS. The first one, as we said, is the residential. Sell and purchase. Anything residential is right here. When we go over it, we see all those uh, criteria that we can select and um, basically look at the different type of, of searches that we want to create. So a little bit about those criteria. When you click on a search on a certain property type, basically what happens is the system will give you all the results that exist on that specific property type. For example, this is a residential um, residential cell. It would have over 5,000 results right now on the MLS. When you select a different criteria, for example, the price, and you select between 200 and 1 million. You basically exclude 
um, anything that is lower than 200 and higher than 1 million. When you select in the bedroom, for example, three bedrooms and up, you basically exclude anything that is under three bedroom. Or if we select from three bedroom to five bedroom, we basically exclude everything that is under three bedrooms and over five bedrooms. So those criteria, basically their purpose is to exclude information from your results. So if you're looking for a certain criteria, you're gonna exclude everything else. For example, if you're looking, if you're pressing on Broward County only, you will receive properties in Broward County only and nowhere else outside Broward County. So as you see right here, I don't know if you can see that uh, uh, bottom corner on the left, it actually lowers yeah. lower the amount of results, thank you, Daisy, uh, to much lower results. Uh, be, instead of 5,000, over 5,000 results, now we have under 2,000 results. So basically those criteria exclude anything else. That's the reason for these criteria. Now it's very, very important to use those criteria because when you're searching for a certain type of property, you definitely don't want to have the entire information of the MLS in your search. It's going to take you days and weeks to find the properties that you want. That's the reason those criteria exist. If your client is looking for a three to five bedroom house, if his budget is between 200 and 300,000, that's where you put it. If your client is looking for a specific neighborhood, you can select the specific geographic area for the specific neighborhood. So that's a little bit about excluding information and about the criteria right here and the reason we have them here and how we're going to use them. Now, so now that we touched about those criteria and how to search with them, we're gonna take we're gonna touch another tool uh, in order to uh, to take the search into the next level. Another tool that we have is the map. Okay, when we click on the map, it will actually save the criteria that we selected here. One second, for some reason it doesn't go to the map. When we go to the map, we can see the entire results that we saw here under 2000 results. We can see them right here on the map. That's where they exist. The map give us another criteria tool give us another excluding tool, um, which is drawing on the map. Instead of uh, selecting a certain neighborhood, instead of selecting a certain city, instead of selecting a certain county, we have the option to select an area or multiple areas on the map, okay? And we have a different type of drawing tools. Um, we have uh, a radius, we have a rectangular, and we have a polygon. So we have three uh, type of, uh, of drawing tools. We're going to select just any, any drawing tool basically will allow you uh, to draw an area on the map. And, and when you select this area, you basically exclude everything else around it. So let's say your client is looking into um, into Parkland area and is also interested in um, a little bit under Pampano Beach area. And you can draw a pelagon, um, which you can change by the way, you can change its shape, its size um, and so on. Or you can draw a rectangle and have it right here. And all those areas, those are the, the selected areas. Those are the areas, obviously, that you're going to have listings in. 
everywhere else is going to be excluded. And that's a very, very nice tool um, to have a certain geographic area that you think your client will like, or you know, since your client told you that he would like, and have those this information right here and have those criteria right here and be able to show him or her those results, those uh, listings. And now that we selected different criteria and we selected different areas on the map, we can go to results, okay? As you see the results, this is the result page. Uh, by default, it comes um, with this um, platform of results, with this uh, display of results. Uh, this is a uh, agent single line results, which allows us to see multiple um, listings, multiple results on the same page. And we can also select how many results we wanna see on the same page. Okay, and that's pretty much, that's basically preference. The way you look at it, the way it's more comfortable for you as an agent, whatever is more comfortable for you, you can select right here. Um, now, um, for any result, for any listing, we have different type of displays. And those are a few of them, or maybe all of them. Um, that we can select from right here. I don't know if you can see that, but next to display, there are different type of um, display types uh, that you can view the results, that you can view the listings on. Um, the two most important, of course, um, is would be the single line, and the second one would be the agent full, as you see right here. The agent full will have all the information um, all the information that you can see, all the information that exists on or about that listing will exist on agent full. There is no information that is excluded from this view. So we would see the, the property address, we would see the, the, um, the remarks, we would see everything right here on, on agent full. There is no information that has been excluded from here. And after agent full, we have other different uh, viewing displays that will actually will exclude some of the information. And um, the most important one, of course, or important ones, of course, would be the client's view. In the client's view, basically, the information that will be showcast um, will always, always, always exclude the listing agent and the listing broker contact information. So that's a very, very important thing. When you wanna share information um, from the MLS, from metrics in this case, uh, with your client, you should always select a client view. If you are going to share a printout of this uh, of this um, result or anything like that, you should always select client view. The reason is client view always lack the listing broker's information. So you'd never have to worry about sharing this uh, information with your client and having your, having your client for some reason contacting the listing agent by himself and um, bypassing it for some reason. So there's never a worry Alert like from that. Google Chrome, E-Time TX-16 as multi-protocol. It doesn't exist. You can only see, um, they, can, they will only be able to see the information that's related to the listing and nothing that's related to the contact of the listing broker. So um, as we said, we have different type of, um, displays and we're going back into the agent full. Um, when we look here at the agent full, we see the address on the top, we see the pictures, um, we can scroll down, we can see the folio number and a link with the folio number. The link of the folio number is basically the link to IMAP, which we're gonna talk about in the next class. 
Um, IMAP is a tool that we use to gather information uh, that comes from the tax collector, uh, which will help us and identify the owner of the property and um, other important information. Um, after that, we have remarks. Um, we have everything basically that the listing broker uploaded to the listing and everything that they marked or everything that they selected or added is gonna show up here. Their contact information, which is very, very important. Um, when it comes time for us to submit an offer, that would be a very, very important section. We can gather, we can take the information from here, their contact information if you wanna schedule showing and also the compensation that we're going to receive um, for bringing our client. Okay, and this is very, very important because when it comes time to get paid, we can always go back to the listing itself and know how much compensation we need to receive from the listing broker. This is what they're basically offering us. Um, any questions so far? Anyone? No questions, that's great. So it's pretty clear. Um, so now that we looked at how to search within uh, a certain property, which is very similar when it goes to any type of property. Um, it will all have the same type of concept. Of course, the information within the criteria is gonna be different, but the concept itself of excluding information and excluding listings from the search itself, and going through the map and excluding geographic areas from the search and then going to results is going to be the same. The process itself is going to be the same and it doesn't matter what type of property you're going to select. Um, so now that we do that, we can go over a little bit, a little bit more into that, into the property types. Um, the second property type that I want to talk about would be the, I'm sorry, the residential income. Residential income, those, this is a category that goes between anything which is commercial and residential, okay? This property would be still an income generating property anything that is an income generating property, but is a residential property, will fall under this section. Obviously, because it's such a unique type of property, it would have less results, less listings on it, um, but it exists nonetheless. What is a residential income and why a property is categorized as residential and not as commercial, if it's an income generating property, in any property, any residential property, which has less than four units, less than four apartments in it, is categorized as residential. It's not yet a commercial property. For example, a duplex, a triplex, those are still residential property. Anything that goes over four units goes in, falls into the cat categories of commercial, even though it's a residential property, even though people are actually living there, since it has over four units, over four apartments, um, it will fall under commercial property, okay? So let's go into residential income and see some uh, examples. We're just gonna look on the map. We're not gonna select anything in the criteria here because we don't want to exclude anything. There aren't many properties um, from this type of property. And we're going to look on the map and we're just going to select one property. Um, this property, for example, um, has four units within it. Um, we can see at the top, we will be able to see the pictures. We'll be able to get more information about it right here. And we can also see the listing agent as the ability when they list, or the listing broker rather, as the ability when they list the property 
to add more information about each specific unit. Um, they can add the income, the monthly income of how much they're making, the size, uh, the number of rooms, bedrooms and, and, and um, living room and, and so on, um, bathrooms, and a little bit more information about the rooms. Um, so he has the ability to give us information about each and every uh, specific unit here. And of course, as we go down, we'll be able to see the contact information of the listing broker and the listing agent. So this is an example of, and, and a very classic uh, example of um, residential income property, which is again, any property, which is an income generating property under four units, okay? Um, the next part, the next uh, type of search that we have, the next type of property that we have, rather on the MLS, on the matrix, um, and again, as I said, by the way, every, uh, what we see here, the example that I'm showing you here, this is the example from the Miami Association of Realtors. Um, maybe different MLSs have different criteria that maybe they categorize their properties a little bit different, which is fine. Um, maybe different states have different laws about different properties, and therefore their MLSs will categorize those um, search criteria is a little bit different, but here, this is an example that's very common in Florida. And those, those are the type of, uh, listing criteria that we very see very in most of the um, MLSs in Florida. And this is how it's categorized here. But if you see it differently in other MLSs, it's absolutely fine. The concept is always going to stay the same. So the next, uh, searching criteria, searching, um, type would be um, residential land. Um, and we're gonna go into it. Um, residential land, it's pretty simple. Anything that is residential that wasn't developed, uh, a land, residential land that no one built on it before. Um, it's enough that someone built a small house on it and it's not categorized by the MLS generally as a residential uh, land. Although many times you're going to see, even though it has a small house on it, if the house itself doesn't have a value, it's really, really under value. Maybe it was developed many, many years ago. Maybe it's uh, been abandoned or, or, or it's not functional, functioning anymore. It would be categorized as um, residential land. Um, or if it's... Or if it's uh, or if it needs to be demolished, it will not be uh, categorized as, as a, resident, a residential cell. It will be categorized as residential land. And we're going to select one properties right here from the map uh, to look. Nothing much to look. Um, as far as pictures, most of the time you will have maybe two or three pictures at the most. Um, as a listing agent, FYI, you always want to put more than three pictures. And that's because of uh, the way the property will be optimized and will be uh, syndicated into other websites out there. And you do want the listing to be syndicated to as many uh, websites and many um, platforms out there as possible because that will increase your chances of getting clients and getting buyers. Um, so basically in uh, residential land, we will have maybe two or three pictures um, in the residential land, we'll have a description. Um, sometimes uh, here in the attachments or maybe in the pictures themselves, we're gonna have plans that maybe the current owner already got from the city or, 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 or submitted to the city and got approved for or got permits for, uh, which will increase the value of the land. Sometimes not, we will get some information about the land itself, about the location, also on the broker remarks, um, anything that's related to us and the broker doesn't wanna share with the public um, will be left on the broker remarks. Us, I'm, I mean, any real estate agent or realtor or, or broker um, that need to know this information, the broker remarks will have it. Uh, and this information, again, will not be shown to the public. So it will not be syndicated to 
website outside the MLS and it will not be uh, shared with your clients when you select uh, a client view, any type of client view when you share with your clients, it, this information will not be uh, shared with them. And of course, the contact information of the uh, listing broker and listing agents in this case. Um, okay, so we go, we go to the next type of um, uh, listing type, and this is commercial, uh, commercial end. Same, same concept as the residential end, only this land is um, purposed into different reason. Um, commercial land is a land that's supposed to be developed on. And let's see if we have one example. This is one example uh, of a commercial land. And as you see here, they also have some type of maybe development plans or maybe the the land itself is already being developed, um, but this is a commercial land. It cannot be developed, but maybe some plans about uh, about uh, developing this land in the future. And again, we will have all the information about the property, the price. Um, we will talk in. We will talk about um, the commercial uh, pricing in another class. Um, in a commercial class because that's a little bit different than residential and it's not for uh, it's not purposed for this class as being um, a beginner class for MLS. Um, commercial prices can be different, can be showcased differently. Um, so we're going to talk about it in another class. Um, but we have the price, we have the contact information of the listing broker and the listing agent, they're right here. So let's run into the next type of property. And that would be the improved commercial. Um, An improved commercial, again, we're not gonna touch too much about commercial right now uh, because that's an advanced class, that's a commercial class, has nothing to do with what, what we're going through right now. But if you do need to look for your client for office or anything commercial, that is the place to look for it. You can definitely find all the information that other brokers share with us right here. Um, and commercial, what is commercial? Anything that is not residential is commercial, fall under commercial. So if it would be uh, a, a retail store, if it would be shopping plaza, if it would be a mall, if it would be, let's say it could be um, an apartment building. Someone is, if uh, uh, an owner of an apartment building is trying to sell an apartment building, and he gave the listing to a listing broker, which listed it here on the MLS. This is where you're gonna find this apartment building. An apartment building has to be at least bigger than five apartments. Has to be at least five apartments or more because if it's under five apartments, as we said, it's gonna fall under residential income. Um, so anything commercial is right here. And if we're gonna to touch really quick about commercial, right here in um, the criteria by default criteria that we have, uh, we already have all the property, we have the property type, which will have all the type of properties of commercial, which we can search for. So when we search for commercial, commercial, it's a big word. It will, it will include inside of it a lot of many type of properties, as I said before. Um, and this section right here will allow us to search for different type of properties that we want. For example, if your client is looking for, and it's very, very common, uh, the client would look for an office. If you have a client that uh, for some reason looking for an office, office space, that, it, well, that would be a place to look for. Now, when we click on the office space, there's also the type of transaction, transaction type. It could be a lease or it could be a sell. Unlike the residential, which was already divided into residential sell and re residential lease, the com commercial section, the commercial um, type of properties wasn't divided by default uh, to, to lease and sell. This is the section, this is the part where, where you can divide it, where you can separate it and select 
either just list or either just sell, or to exclude just sell, or to exclude just list, where it says not would basically exclude this section that we select. Um, now that I'm touching the or or not section, as you as we're gonna go um, uh, through the through the criteria, we see that we have different type of uh, options for criteria. So we have a drop down criteria, which uh, will allow us to select only one uh, criteria. We have the multiple uh, criteria right here that goes like that goes into uh, another type of drop down menu. Um, but this drop down menu, if we click on the shift, we'll be able to select two criteria at the same time. Um, and on the bottom, we will have three options. We will have the option of and, we will have the option of or, and we will have the option of not. And basically doesn't do much because it basically allows them to be a part of everything else. Or will allow only those three criteria to be selected. And not will exclude those three criteria. So if you want to look for anything, any type of commercial property, but not an office space or not other type and not a professional type of property, we're going to select not, and that will exclude them, okay? Um, so that's just FYI about the searching criteria. And again, we'll go to results and we can see the different type of results. And we're just gonna pick one property and this is an office space, obviously. Um, Again, we can see the pictures. Of course, we're going to have much more results when we go into commercial offices because there are much more uh, properties out there available uh, for office spaces and, and for commercial. And we can see the, the pictures. We can see description of the property, um, size, and so on. And obviously, at the, at the bottom, uh, the contact information of the listing broker and listing agent and the compensation that you receive. Um, before we finish with the criteria, with the type of uh, properties, um, there is also one last uh, type of property, uh, which is the business uh, opportunity. As we said before, business opportunity is everything, everything that is not residential, that is a commercial, but doesn't include the real estate within. So, for example, uh, grocery store. Uh, the grocery store was operating for such and such time. It's a business. It's an established business. It's an income generating business. Um, but this grocery store is paying rent uh, monthly or, or, or uh, annually to a landlord. And this grocery store doesn't include the real estate. It only includes the, the business itself. That's where we can find this type of property and also list those type of property. Um, another example would be um, an adult daycare. Someone has been operating an adult daycare or any type of business. For many years, the business was established. It's an income generating business, but this business, although sit in uh, one stationary place, this stationary place is not owned by the business owner. This owner is paying rent on a monthly or annually or what have you uh, basis. And that sale of that particular business doesn't include um, the sale of, um, of the real estate. And just for example, we're gonna go into um, my listings, just for example, includes one of, of these type of properties. And this is at 2800 North 29th Avenue. Right now in 2021, I'm marketing this property. And this is basically a restaurant. Um, when you click here, we can see more information. Um, the restaurant owner uh, is selling the restaurant, is selling all the equipment. He's selling the, the reputation of the business, the, the clients that he has, 
um, the accounts that he has with different clients in the area and everything that comes with the restaurant and the grandfathering of the restaurant in that location, which doesn't allow other restaurants to open in the area. And that's what he's basically selling. But this restaurant owner is paying rent on a monthly basis to a landlord, to the landlord that owns the entire building. And this is why this is um, business opportunity and not uh, a commercial sale. Um, so that is the difference, and that's a little bit about uh, commercial, uh, I'm sorry, business opportunity versus commercial. Uh, and right here at the bottom, of course, again, as you can see, the contact information of the listing broker, the listing agent, and the compensation that you will be receiving uh, when you bring your back. Um, so now that we went over um, this important stuff, which is the most important section of the MLS, the reason that the MLS exists is for us as, um, as real estate agents and real estate brokers to look for other real estate agents and brokers listings. That is the main reason that the MLS exists. Now that we went through this, we're going to go into other, um, other functions that the MLS has. Okay, and the most important function that the MLS has, um, the MLS basically um, works as a CRM. And what do I mean by that? When you go in to your contacts on the MLS, on metrics, you will be, be able to see all the contacts that you ever upload into metrics. And for example, when we click on one of them, click on one that has both names. Um, when we click on one of them, we'll be able to see all the information about that client. Um, we'll be able to see, first of all, the details, um, which mean uh, the first name, last name, um, email address. We can also edit this section and add more information. For example, if you want to add their phone number, if you want to add the website, if you want to add their cell phone, their physical address, notes about this client, we can add it here and we can save it, okay? Um, that is a very strong tool because this is how we can save all our clients. And by the way, when we save our clients here, just so you know, your current broker, whether you're in my company or other companies, your current broker doesn't have access in many cases. They don't have access to your clients by default. Um, so right now I cannot see your contact information and that stays safe with you and that's by default and that's so you can protect your clients. Um, so you can really use that um, without worrying in a very safe way to insert your clients and know that even if you switch a company, even if you switch an association, you can always export this, this list of clients, which I'll show you later how to export it and always be confident that no one else is taking your clients or contacting your clients or so on and so on. At least here on the MLS, at least here on metrics, at least on this, on that, platform that you upload your clients, they're pretty much by default saved with you. Of course, there are ways to access them. Of course, there are ways for brokers to access them if, if they request from the MS, so and so there are ways to do that. But by default, for metrics, they're saved with you. Um, after we go, after we, we look at the client info, we can go into the auto email, um, which we go on and go over in a second, we have a section of cart, CMA sent email searches, um, portal searches, and reverse prospects. Now, it's a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of big words, and uh, I'm sure they don't make sense to a lot of you right now. But we can go over back into the metrics, into the search part, and we're gonna see how they make sense of everything. 
today. I just want to take a look at the time, how much time we have left. We, we have less than 10 minutes left. So we're going to do that pretty quick. Um, when we went to search, um, we're going into search one more time. We're going into residential, residential search. Let's say um, you have a client that is looking for, again, a property between 200 and 1 million um, dollar. He's looking for three bedroom, he's looking for at least two baths, anything bigger than two baths. He's looking only for single family, only for single, and in a geographic area, which will only include the beach side, um, between Golden Beach and Sunny Isles Beach. Just giving maybe if, if you're not familiar with, um, with the Miami area, South Florida area, maybe those words mean nothing for you, but um, to you, but he's looking just for this area. And let's change the criteria because we can't find anything within this price range here. So we're gonna add another zero and another zero right here. And we're gonna go into the map one more time and we have more results obviously because of the price, um, the price criteria, um, which is much higher in this type of area. And we're gonna go to the results. And when we get to the results, um, we receive all those, all this information, all this nice information, all the results, all the type of property that we wanted to see, uh, that we know our client might be interesting. Um, and again, we can see them in different ways. We have different views. Um, but now that we have those results, we want to share it with our client. This is a client that we trust. This is a client that we want to, that work with us many years. And we want to share this information with our clients. There are a few ways to do that. One way is to just print everything and email it to him. Okay, and when we click on print, we again gonna have different type of viewing uh, that we can print it on. Let's say if we don't wanna print it as agent full, since we're not going for showing or anything like that, agent full, when we print something in agent full, that we print that information, those, those these things just for us to see, not for anyone else. So let's say, we print in a client full, we can press print and we will see a preview of what we're gonna print. We can print it and then give it to our client. That's one way to do it. As we see, we have all this information right here. Another way to do that would be to share a link with our client. Um, and that would be via email. We can do that via email. We're basically sharing a link with our client and he will be able to see with the link when we press preview, we'll be able to see that too. Our client is going to see that with our client. Uh, so basically he will see the property that we selected for him. He will see it on the map. He can also change the view from a map to, uh, um, to a grid, to a list um, or on the map. And he can also access the details of the listing. And that's another way. Those are two simple, way, simple ways to share it with our client. We can also take it one step forward. We can also save this search, the search that we, we, we created for our client, uh, all the criteria that we created for our client, we can share it with our client by clicking on save here on the bottom. This is in metrics. This is where we can do that. When we click on save and create and click on new auto email. When we click on new auto email, we basically creating an automatic email that will be sent to our clients on a daily or a weekly or whatever basis that we want to send it to him that is going to receive an update on automatically without us actually sending it to him, okay? Um, but we're gonna talk about this section, which is going to take uh, the um, metrics class into more depth um, next week. That's gonna be the first section that we're gonna talk about. Also next week, uh, just because we ran out of time, um, it's almost 12 o'clock and this is a one hour class and I know you guys are very busy and probably want to go into 
go into your business and do other stuff that you have to do. Um, so that we're going to save to the next class for next week, for next Monday. Also coming up next class, um, we're going uh, to look at different tools that exist that links and, and uh, collaborating with metrics and how to use them. And also next class, hopefully we're going to have enough time. We're going to list our first, first listing. Um, we're going to do a few different type of listings that we can create. We're going to list our, our first listing and see how it looks like when we basically uh, list a listing, what we need to have before we list the listing and um, what information is required when we list our first listing and how we do that. And we're gonna do that next week. So I wish everyone a good day and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If anyone has a question about the class that we, um, that we ran right now, uh, please let me know. Um, anyone has any question? Okay, so if no one has a question, if anyone has a question later, please uh, email me or text me or, or drop it down. We're gonna, on the comments, we're gonna have this class um, on our website so you can view it again and again. If there's something that you missed or something that you wanna go over uh, again. Um, so if there, there's any questions, please let me know. And um, you guys have a good day and I hope to see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.